Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. In this video, we'll learn how to solve simple linear equations, sort of linear equations that you're likely to come across if you're preparing for GRE, GMAT, TES, HESES, SAT, ACT. As I said, these are simple linear equations. We will learn how to solve them efficiently and, and properly, that is. The first 10, altogether, I have about 20, 25 problems. I don't know how many 20 to 25 uh, equations. I don't know how many we'll be able to solve in this video. I'll make it in two parts. But the first 10 that we're going to solve are very, very simple equations. These, if they appear in the exam, will appear as easy questions. The next 10 or so will be medium, and the last 3 or 4 or 5 are going to be the hard ones. Hard one as far as these exams are concerned. Do you understand? As I said, first 10 are very simple, very easy. They will appear, if they appear in the exam, they will appear in the easy questions. Here we go. Number 1. It says 2p plus 3 equals 13. 2p plus 3 equals 13. Well, if 2p plus 3 equals 13, subtract 3 from both sides and we will end up that 2p, 3 cancels out, equals 10, divide both sides by 2, and that gives you p equals to 5. And then we find the answer, p equals to 5, put it back in the original equation, make sure it makes sense, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, that's exactly what we have here. Number 2. 3x plus 4 equals 10. 3x plus 4 equals 10. Again, subtract 4 from both sides of the equations. When we do that, this 4 drops out, and here we end up with 6, and here we end up with 3x. 3x equals 6. We want x by itself. Divide both sides of the equation by 3, and the 3 will drop out, and x equals 6 over 3, which is 2. x equals 2. When we find the answer, we put it back in the original equation, make sure it makes sense, make sure it works out. 3 times 2 would be 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's exactly what they tell us here. Number 3. 5a plus 3 equals 8. As you can see, these are very simple. Subtract 3 from both sides. 5a, 3 are going to cancel out, equals 5. If 5a equals 5, divide both sides by 5, and we find that a drops out, and a, one equal, a equals 1. Again, we put it back in our equations. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8, which is exactly what we have here. Number 4. 4z plus 3 equals 15. Subtract 3 from both sides. These are going to drop out. And 4z equals 12. If 4z equals 12, we want z by itself. Divide both sides by 4. 4s are going to drop out. And z equals 4 divided, 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Put it back in the original equation, make sure it makes sense. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 is ex exactly what we have there. Let's go to number 5. Number 5. Number 5 says 9y plus 2 equals 20. 9y plus 2 equals 20. Subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. 2's are going to drop out from here and 9y equals 20 minus 2 which is 18. We are not interested in value of 9y, we want to find out what y is. Divide both sides of the equation by 9. 9's are going to drop out and y equals 18 over 2 which is 2. Put it back in there. 9 times 2 is 18, 18 plus 2 is 20 which is exactly what we have there. Something like this. If it does, if it does appear in the exam, as I said, it's going to appear in the first two or three problems because these are very simple and it should take no more than a few seconds, 10 to 20 seconds at the top, at the most. No more than that. 4y plus 8 equals 20. Subtract 8 from both sides. This is number 6. 8 is going to drop out and we end up with 4y equals 20 minus 8 which is 12. Divide both sides by 4 so that we can get rid of the 4. We can have a y by itself. And y equals 12 over 4, which is 3. Put it back in the original equation, make sure it makes sense. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 8 would be 20, which is exactly what we have here. Let's move on to number 7. Number 7. 
nz plus 5 equals 25. I want you to do, num I want you to do number 7 and number 8. Let's do number 7 by yourself. I want you to do number 7 by yourself. I know it's not a big deal, it's a very simple thing. Pause the video and do it yourself. Now what we should realize, what we should realize, what I'm about to say is not earth shattering. It's not a big deal, but it will save you, it will save you a few seconds in the exam. If you're able to see that the equation that they give you here, the coefficient, the 10 and the 5 and the 25, they are all multiples of 5. They have a common factor. All of these numbers have common factors of 5. Let's divide the entire equation by 5. Divide the entire equation by 5 before you do any work at all. It will save some work. 10 divided by 5 is 2z. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. 2z plus 1 equals 5. And now do the work. It will be quicker. Subtract 1 from both sides. 1's are going to drop out and 2z equals to 4, divide both sides by 2, 2's are going to drop out and z equals 4 over 2 which is 2. Had you done it, had you done the problem in its original form, it wouldn't have mattered too much, you still would have gotten the same answer, but this is the more straightforward way. Put it back in there, original equation was 10 times z, 10 times 2 is 20, 20 plus 5 is 25 which is exactly what we have there. Number 8. Number 8. 7b plus 2 equals 23. As you can see, we have a 7, we have a 7, we have a 2, and we have a 23. They have nothing in they have nothing in common. There is no common factor. So we're just going to solve it. Subtract 2 from both sides and we end up 2 are going to cancel out and we end up with 7b equals 21. We are not interested in the value of 7 b's, we want the b by itself, divide both sides by 7. 7's seven are going to drop out and b equals 21 over 7, which is 3. Put it back in the original equation, make, sense, make sure it makes sense. What we are claiming is that b is equal to 3, therefore 7 times 3 is 21, 21 plus 2 is 23, which is exactly what we have there. Number 9. Number 9. 6d plus 3 equals... 33. 60 plus 3 equals 33. Are you able to see something right away? Did you notice something right away? 3d plus 3 equals 33. What we notice again is that they have a common factor, common factor of 3. They have a common factor of 3. Let's, let's divide the entire equation by 3. When we, say, when we say divide the entire equation by 3, that means that we must divide every single term that appears on the left hand side and every single term that appears on the right hand side by this common factor. 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 2, so we end up with 2d plus 3 over 3 is 1 equals 11. Subtract 1 from both sides, 1 they are going to drop out and 2d equals 11 minus 1 which is 10 and therefore d equals 5. d equals 5 if you divide both sides by 2. Put it back in there, make sure it makes sense. The original equation was 6 times d plus 3, 6 times d plus 3. d we are claiming is 5. 6, 5 is a 30, 30 plus 3 is 33, which is exactly what we have there. The very last one, number 10. The reason I say very last one is because after number 10, the things are going to get a little prickly. Do you understand? No, number 10 is the very last of the easy ones. Beginning with number 11, the problems that you will see are the ones that, 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 that are going to be classified as medium questions, regardless of which exam you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for GRE or GMAT or TES or HESES or... SAT or ACT, this is how it's laid out. They will they will show up as medium questions, beginning with eleven. Number ten. Number ten. Ten P plus two equals one hundred and two. Ten P plus two equals one hundred and two. Again, we notice that ten is a ten is a, ten is a multiple of two, two is a multiple of two, one hundred and two is a multiple of two. Let's divide the entire equation by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so we end up with 5p plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Let's divide 102 divided by 2. How many 2s how many does 1 have? 1 has no 2s. That 1 goes and joins the 0, becomes 10, and 10 has 5 2s, and 2 has 1 2s. In other words, 
102 divided by 2 is 51. Of course it's 51 because 100 divided by 2 would have, would have been 50. Instead of 100, we have 102. 100, 52 is 100. 52 is 100. Therefore, it stands to reason that 102 should be composed of, should be made up of 51 twos. So subtract one from both sides. One drops out and we end up with 5p equals 50, which means p equals 10. p equals 10. Let's put it back in there, make sure it makes sense. 10 times p, 10 times 10 would be 100. 100 plus 2 is 102, which is exactly what we have there. So that was the end of number 10. Number 11. Maybe I'll do up to 15. Uh, maybe I'll do up to 15 here. Number 11. X plus 4 plus X minus 3 over 5. X, X not X plus 4. X over 4 plus X minus 3 over 5. We are told equals 3. Okay. What can we do here? As you can see, we have denominators here. Not only we have denominators, but they are all different denominators. This one, this one has a denominator of 4, this one has a denominator of 5, this guy has a denominator of 1. That won't do. We have to have the common denominators. We have to have the common denominators. We have to somehow make the denominators, denominators of all the terms on the right-hand side of the equations and on the left-hand side of the equations the same, as long as we can make the denominators the same for all the terms, then that denominator will cease to play any role, that denominator will have will cease to have any importance and will be at liberty to simply ignore it. But first we have to make first we have to have common denominators. We have a 5 and a 4, the common denominator will be the multiple of uh, product of 5 and 4 which is 20. How can we make this denominator into a 20? Very simple. Multi take, this, take, this, take this quantity and multiply it by 5 over 5. Now we have in the bottom 5 times 4. Here we have a denominator of 5, we want 20. How do we do that? Well, take the quantity that they give you and multiply it by 4 over 4. How do we make the diameter of this one into 20? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 20 over 20. Voila. Now they have the same denominator. Because, the, because of the fact that now they have the common denominator, we are at liberty to simply ignore the denominators from each of the term because it ceases to play any its significance. It has no importance anymore. This guy cannot go around saying, look look at me, I got a denominator of 20. They're going to turn around and say, oh, big, big freaking deal. So, so do we. Shut up. Everybody has a denominator of 20. It's not a big deal. So we're going to ignore the denominator. On the top, what we have is 5 times x, which is 5x, plus 4 times x, which is 4x, 4 times negative 3, which is 12, negative 12, and here we have 3 times 20, which is 60. 4x plus 5x is 9x minus 12 equals 60. Add 12 to both sides. Make sure your work is clean. Make sure your work is neat. 9x equals 60 plus 12, which is 72. Divide both sides by 9. And how many how many 9s does 72 have? 72 is made up of 8 9s or 9 8s. 9 8s are 9 eighths are 72. I know that. I know that 9 eighths. If you have 9 eighths, that will give you 72. I know that for a fact. And how do I know that? Because if I had one more 8, instead of 9 8, if I had one more 8, 10 eighths would be 80. 10 eighths are 80. If 10 eighths are 80, then 9 eighths must be 8 less than 80, which is 72. So 9 eighths. 72 divided by 9 is 8. I'm making a big fuss about it, but you have to know your timetables. I shouldn't have to explain this much. You have to, you know, as I already, as I already mentioned to you before, uh, in the, in this series, uh, you have to know your timetables. And if you do not know your timetables by heart, you have to know your timetables at least one through ten. One through twelve is even better. And if you don't know your timetables, watch the first few videos in the series here, basic math. Just type in basic math and watch the first few videos, maybe the first 10 videos, or maybe the first 5 videos, and learn your timetables. It's very important. That's it, we're done. x equals 8. We are not quite done yet. Now we're going to verify our work. So here we're going to verify it. 
Let's verify it. So first term we had was x over 4. x we are claiming is 8. So it's 8 over 4 plus x minus 3. 8 minus 3 over 5. And let's see what that gives us, okay? So here we have 8 over 4, which is 2. And 8 minus 5 is, 8 minus 3 is 5. 5 over 5 is 1. 2 plus 1 equals 3, which is exactly what we have here. It checks out. Our answer is correct. Our answer is indeed correct. Number 12. Number 12. You may want to do these problems yourself. Pause the video immediately and solve them yourself. There's no harm in it. Number 12 tells us that x minus 2 over 3 plus x plus 4 over 6 equals 4. Again, they have different denominators. We have to have the same denominator because common denominator will help, help a great deal. This one has a denominator of 6. How can we make this denominator 6? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply top and bottom by 2. And we are allowed to do that. We can multiply anything by the... As long as we can take any quantity and multiply it by a fraction where the denominator and the numerator are the same. As long as you're multiplying a given quantity by a fraction where the numerators and the denominators are the same, essentially I'm not doing anything. We're simply multiplying this quantity by 1. 2 over 2 is 1. We're not changing anything. It's still, it's still, it's still the same quantity. We have not changed its value. We have simply multiplied it by 1. It's just that 1 happens to be here incognito. It is, it is 1, but it is incognito. So that's 6. Now that gives, it, that gives you a denominator of 6. Here we already have a denominator of 6. We need a denominator of 6 here. Let's multiply this quantity by 6 over 6. Before I completely forget it and before I end up inadvertently erasing it, I want to find out when we learned the word incognito. I know we learned it. I know we learned it. And I'm going to tell you exactly when we learned it in a few seconds. Incognito. Imbroglio. Incognito. There we go. Day number 42. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, if you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be if you're preparing for these exams. Vocabulary is very important in these tests. GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, SATs. You have to have decent vocabulary. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you will learn this video. You will learn this word. If you simply type in vocabulary words, you will simply type in vocabulary, day 42. Vocabulary, day 42. And watch the video where we learn the one word incognito. So here we go. We have a denominator of 6 here, we have a denominator of 6 here and here. Everybody has a denominator of 6 so we can get going. We can ignore the denominator. We, will, we, can, we are at liberty now to ignore the denominators. We have 2 times x which is 2x. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4 plus x plus 4 because here this quantity is just being multiplied by 1. It's not, it's not changing anything. And here we have 24. Let's combine the like terms. We have 2x and an x which is 3x. Oh, what do you know? Unless I made a mistake here, these fours drop out. That equals 24, and therefore x equals 8. If you divide both sides by 8, uh, if you divide both sides by 3, 3x equals 24, therefore x will equal 8. Let's put it in here. Verify it. x minus 2, x we are saying is 8, so it's 8 minus 2 over 3, plus 8 plus 4, over 6. Let's see what this gives us. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 8 plus 2 is 12. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, which is exactly what we have here. It checks out. It checks out. Our answer is indeed correct. Our answer is indeed correct. Number 13. Number 13. 4m plus 4m over 3 minus 2m over 4, we are told, equals 5 halves. 
we are told that 4m divided by 3 minus 2m divided by 4 equals 5 halves. Again, we have to have a common denominator. The common denominator here would be, well, if we don't actually have to do it. It's very simple, but if you, if you had to do it, this is how we do it. 4, 3, 2, and 4, and, and you start dividing it by some common factor, and the common factor here is 2. 2 would be the common factor. That becomes 3, 4 becomes 2, and this becomes 1, and that's it. There, there are no common factors between 3, 2, and 1, so we stop right there. So the common, the least common multiplier is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 2. 1 times 2 times 3 times 2 plus 4 times 3 is 4. But this was nonsense. We don't have to do that. We, we should be able to see that by which simple visual inspection that 12 is going to be the least least common multiplier. Least common multiplier. We could use 24. 24 is a multiplier of 3. 24 is a multiplier is of 4. 24 is a multiplier of 2. We could also use we could, we could also use the common denominator instead of, instead of 12, instead of 24, we could also use the common denominator of 24 million. But that will be a damn silly thing to do because it will create a lot of extra work. We are looking for the least common multiplier, the lowest possible one. And the least one is 12, not, 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 not 24, not 24 million, but 12. The least common multiplier. So we want to make everything 24. We want the denominator of everything to be 24. How do we do that here? Take this quantity and multiply it by 8 over 8. We want a 24 here. How do we do that? Multiply it by 6 over 6. How do we do? How do we convert this into 24? The denominator of 24 multiplied by 12 over 12. We have multiplied all of these three quantities simply by 1. But again, 1 happens to be incognito. Let's say that everybody has a denominator of 12, we can ignore it. 4 times 8 is 32. 32m minus 12m equals 5 times 12, which is 60. I'm just going to write that as 5 times 12. 32 mi 32m minus 12m would be 20m. 20m equals 5 times 12. We want, we're not interested in 20 m's, we want m by itself, so divide both sides by 2, 20. 20 is going to drop out and m equals 5 times 12 divided by 20. Let's start reducing it. I see a 5 here, I see a 20 here, let's divide top and bottom by 5. 5 is going to drop out and 20 is going to become 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 4 again. 4 is going to drop out and 12 is going to become 3. In other words, we're claiming that m equals 3. Make sure our answer is correct by putting it back in here. We were given 4m divided by 3. 4m, which we are saying is 3, over 3, minus 2m, 2 times m, which is 3, over 4. And let's see what this gives us. Here the 3's are going to drop out, and we end up with 4, minus, reduce the top and bottom, we see 2 on the top, we see 4 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 is going to go away, and 4 is going to become 2, minus 3 halves. 4 minus 3 halves. 4, I, I hope you are able to see right away, that 4 is nothing but 8 halves. 4 is nothing but 8 halves. 2 halves make a 1, 4 halves make a 2, 6 halves make 6 halves are, are 3, and 8 halves are 2. 8 halves are 2. This is what we are saying. This is how we speak. 8, 8 halves are 4. Voila. 2 halves are 1, 4 halves are 2, 6 halves are 3, 8 halves are 4. So we can write 4 as 8 halves. 8 halves minus 3 halves would be 5 halves, which is exactly what we have here. Which is exactly what we were told the quantity equals to, which means our answer is correct. This answer must be correct because it checks out. Number 14. Number 14. I think I'm going to stop at number 15 and we're going to pick up from number 16 in the next video. As I said, I was planning to make two videos anyway. We're going to pick up from 16 in the next video. Number 14.
As I already reminded you, it does not hurt for you to stop the video and solve the problem yourself as soon as I put the problem on the blackboard. You will learn more that way by doing it yourself. X over 2 x over 2 plus x over 3 plus plus x over 4 plus x over 5 we are told equals 15 and 2 half uh, 15 15 and 2 fifths 15 and 2 fifths let's see what we can do here first thing you have to figure out here just give me a second here my plastic neighbor has his loan mower going now. First thing we have to figure out is the least common multiplier. We want the denominator of every single term to be the same so that we don't have to worry about the denominator, we don't have to pay attention to it. Let's find out the least common multiplier, LCM, of 2, 3, 4, and 5. 2, 3, 4, and 5. The least common uh, the, the, the common uh, common common factor that we find, at least among the two of them, is 2, 2 and 4. 2 becomes 1, 3 remains 3, 4 will become 2, and 5 will remain 5. That's it. There is nothing else we can do here. So essentially, is 2 times 5, which is 10, and 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 10 is 60. So the least common multiplier is 60. Our job now is to make everybody make sure that everybody has the same denominator of 60. Again, we could, instead of 60, we could have 120, we could have 180, we could have 300, or we can have 300 billion, but 60 is the least common multiplier. 3 billion would do the job just as well, but that will be a damn silly thing to do, do you understand? 3 billion would do because 3 billion is simply a multiple of 60. Any multiple of 60 would do, but this, this is the least. So let's make everybody into a 60. I'm going to erase this part. We're done with this thing. We need 60. So we're going to rewrite this thing when we have some more room. So x over 2 plus x over 3 plus x over 4 plus x over 5, we are told, is 15 and 2 halves, or 2 fifths. Tell you what, instead of writing it's not 15 times 2 fifths, it's 15 and 2 fifths. 15 and 2 fifths. Instead of writing this as 15 and 2 fifths, let's write this as a, instead of mixed fraction, let's put it as an improper fraction. 15 times 5 is 75, 75 plus 2 is 77. So it is 77 over 5. Are you with me so far in this story? Hold on. Let's, let's begin. Let's begin this story. I'm going to change the color because we have the flair for the dramatics. How do we convert 2 into a 60? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 30 over 30. How do you convert 3 into a 60? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 20 over 20. How do we convert 4 into a 60? It's very simple. Multiply it by 15 over 15. 15 times 4 is 60. And what about 5? 12 times 5 is also 60. And here we do not have 60, we have a 5, so we do the same thing here. 12 times 12 over 12. That's it. We're done. That's it. The rest is downhill. The rest is downhill. 30 times x is 30x plus. I should line up. I should line up the terms so that it's easy to see. 30 times x is 30x plus 20 times x is 20x plus 15 times x is 15x plus 12x equals 77 over 77 times 12. Actually, I didn't have to rewrite everything. I'll just edit it very quickly. So here we go. Stay with me in this story. It's very important that you stay with me in this story. 30 plus 20 is 50. 50 plus 10 is 60. 60 plus 1 is uh, 60 plus 10 is 70. 70 plus 5 is 75. 75 plus 2 is 77. One more time. I'm going to do it one more time. This. Okay, one more time, 30 plus 20 is 50, 50 plus 10 is 60, 60 plus 10 is 70, 70 plus 5 is 75, 75 plus 2 is 77. Oh, what do you know? Isn't that nice? I guess somebody who made the question happens to be a nice person. 77x equals 77 times 12. What I'm trying to make you understand is that when you come across something like this, when something damns and things like this, the, the, the place where students are spending inordinate amount of time in the exam, the 
then it's for a student end up spending an inordinate amount of time in the exam is when they come across something like this, they end up multiplying the damn thing. Don't, first of all, it takes time to multiply the damn thing. And then you're going to have a huge number here, you're going to have to divide that by 77. Leave it alone. Leave everything alone until the very last step. And then, and only then, you ask yourself, is it absolutely essential for me to add or subtract these two quantities or multiply or divide these two quantities? Most of the times, it is not essential. It is not necessary. The way the questions are set up in the exam is that they're not just put together willy-nilly. They're not just put together haphazardly. They are put together with a lot of care. They're designed in a certain way for a certain reason. 77x equals 77 times 12. If you divide both sides by 77, it drops out. There we go. x equals 12. x equals 12. Again, before I end up erasing it, let's find out when we... Oh, so again with i, inordinate. There we go. Day number 72. Isn't that nice? Day 72 and a day 42. Again, just type in vocabulary words, day 72, and learn the word. Now we need to verify it. We need to verify our work, so we're going to do that. Let's do it right here. X equals 12. Remember it. So we're going to verify it here. 12 over 2. 12 over 2 plus 12 over 3. 12 over 3 plus 12 over 4. 12 over 4 plus 12 over 5. 12 over 5. Let's see what that gives us. Shall we? 12 divided by 2 is 6, 6, 12 divided by 3 is 4, 12 divided by 4 is 3, that's 13 so far, and 12 divided by 5, 12 divided by 5 is going to be 2 and 2 fifths. 12 has, 12 has 2 fives, 12 has 2 fives, 2 fives are 10, 2 fives are 10, once we take away 10 from the 12, we are le left with a remainder of 2, we are left with a remainder of 2, and that 2 needs to be divided by 5, so it's 2 and 2 fifths, right here, 2 and 2 fifths. Now we simply add them up, see what we get. 6 plus 10 is, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13, 13 plus 2 is 15, so we end up with 15 and 2 fifths. What do you know? What do you know? It checks out. By golly, it checks out. But as I told you before, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it probably many, many times, and not just these questions, not just linear equation, in all the work that you do, your work has to be neat and clean and organized. Organized work, clean work, is a sign of organized thinking. If your work is all jumbled up on the piece of paper there, then that's, that means your thinking was jumbled up. It has to be neat and clean. Number 15, the very last one in this video. Very last one in this video, just give me one second. Just give me one second here. All right, number 15, number 15. And then we're gonna call it a day. In the next video, we'll pick up from 16. Again, I'm gonna set up the problem on the blackboard, pause the video and do it yourself. X plus five over three minus x plus 2 over 2 plus 2x minus 3 over 5 we are told equals 1. One more time I'm going to read it to you. x plus 5 over x plus 5 over 3 minus x plus 2 over 2 plus 2x 2x minus 3 over 5. 2x minus 3 over 5 equals 1. Let's see what we can do. 3, 2, and 5 have no common factors, so the least common multiplier, the least common multiplier here is simply going to be the product of these two numbers. 2 times 5 is 10, so it's 30. We want, we want every denominator, we want the common denominator of 30. How, do, how can we convert 3 into a 30? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 10 over 10. How do we convert this into 30? It's very simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 15 over 15. How do we convert this into 30? Simple. Take this quantity and multiply it by 6 over 6 and this quantity into 30 over 30. 
That's it, you're done. The rest is very easy. The rest is simple. Let's begin, shall we? Let's begin. 10 times x is 10x. 10 times 5 is 50. Make sure you understand this is negative. Negative 15 times x is negative 15x. And negative 15 times 2 is negative negative 30. Plus 6 times 2 is 12x. And 6 times negative 3 is minus 18. And here you'll end up with 30. That's it, we're done. Now we, now we have to combine the like terms. So let's begin then. Combine the like terms. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to do something... I'm going to do something dis different, just watch your weapon. 10x and a negative 5x is going to give us negative 5x. 10x and a negative 15x is going to give us negative 5x. Negative 5x and 12x is going to give us 7x. I see a 50 here and I see a 20 here. Neg a neg negative 30. Negative 30 and a 50, cross them out and that becomes 20. 20 and a minus 18 is going to give us 2. You see what I just did? So this negative 5x and this 12x, these together give us a 7x. This 20 and this negative 18 it gave us 2. Subtract the 2 from both sides. And 7x equals 30 minus 2, which is 28. Divide both sides by 7 and x equals 4. x equals 4. Now we need to verify it. x plus 5, so x is 4. So 4 plus 5, 4 plus 5 over 3 minus x plus 2, 4 plus 2 over 2 plus, I left no room there, I should have done a little bit lower. I should, I should have left it. So x equals 4. I'm going to continue here. Plus 2x minus 3, 2 times 4 minus 3 over 5. Let's see what that gives us, shall we? 4 plus, 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Oh, so they drop out. Not negative 3, 3. It's just 3. So they drop out, these drop out. So which, which means that if our answer is correct, then this quantity better work out to be 1. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5, so we end up with 5 over 5, which is indeed 1, which means that our answer is indeed correct. x equals 4. We were claiming that x equals 4, and it turns out that it works. I'll see you in the next video where we'll pick up from number 16, and we'll go up to, as of right now I have up to 23, I might decide to add 2 more to it, or I might just leave it at 23, but we're going to pick up we're going to pick up in the next video of linear equations. It's, it's, it's going to say the title is simply going to be linear equations, linear equations, two of two, and we'll pick up from number 16. Okay, bye now.